and we're presenting on using infrared spectroscopy to distinguish prism from thrombofusional pressure zones and hydrothermal quartz crystals implications of their growth dynamics. Hello, my name is Tyson Nafi, and I'm a senior geology major. And my name is Trevor Nelson, and I'm a sophomore geology major. Our research is on the growth of quartz crystals inside the Earth. Geologists have learned that quartz crystals grow in hot fluids that circulate inside of the Earth. These hot fluids not only grow quartz crystals, but also the metal ores that we need in our cell phones, our cars, and even our spaceships. So these hot, water-bearing fluids that form our beautiful crystals play critical roles in the evolution inside our planet. The fluids that circulate inside the Earth play roles similar, similar to how blood flows throughout the body. These fluids transport elements from one part of the Earth to another and during this process reorganize their elements. Sadly, these fluids do not remain after the geological processes that form them. The only clue that we have as to what these fluids were like in the past is found in the fingerprints within our solid quartz crystals. Our research mentor, Dr. Phil Iyengar, and many other UWEC students have made remarkable discoveries about these quartz crystals and their growth. Using a fancy technique called infrared spectroscopy, we have learned that fast-growing crystals trap impurity elements in their crystal structure, and slow-growing crystals trap less impurities in their structure. That is, the concentration of impurities is like growth rings found in trees. Nutrient-rich growth years show thick rings of growth, and drought growth, e drought growth years show thin rings. Our research specifically pays attention to chemical growth rings within quartz crystals. These growth rings, we are trying to understand why some growth bases are more active than others. Currently, there, in modern science, there is no reason for this, pro or, excuse me, currently in modern science, there is no way that this problem has been solved. <clears throat> Essentially, we are trying to understand the relationship between the dynamics of fluid flow and crystals growing on the walls of the vein. To test this, we extracted several crystals, some growing adjacent to the crystal wall and some growing perpendicular to the crystal wall, poking into the faster moving fluid. Unfortunately for us, we found no relation between the dynamic fluid flow and the crystal growth. However, instead we saw that the cores of our crystals held a higher density of impurities, which we have concluded to a time of rapid growth. In contrast, we see that the walls of our crystals have low impurities, which we allude to a time of slow growth. In summary, although our hypothesis was disproven, we now have a better understanding of the history and evolution of our quartz crystals. Through our research, we are better developing uh, understanding of how fluids flow through the earth, not only by quartz crystals, but through the ways that metal ores grow themselves. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right, so we, our research pays a specifically attention to the quartz crystal itself. But these hydrothermal environments hold other materials that are needed for every human, you know, every human's needs. So we're trying to apply the dynamics of the fluid that affect the quartz crystals to other environments, such as ore deposits. So in a sense, you're trying to grow them more quickly because they're faster and quicker way to extract the same material? Right now, we are just the fluid is so dynamic, we are just trying to learn how the behavior that it has on crystals in the system. Is it more beneficial, though, to have it grow in the system? That we have not do no. dove into yet. 